Hey class, here we are. I think we made it through all the cold weather. Hopefully none of your pipes burst. I mean, it got really cold. West Texas, uh, now it's almost 60 degrees today. Uh, today we're going to be in 2 Corinthians, of course. We're going through 2 Corinthians. We'll be in chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. And the lesson today is the aroma of Christ. Uh, have you ever had a, uh, a certain smell that you just love to smell? I mean, I think about the county fair here in Texas, you know, you got your cotton candy and your corn on the cob, and I mean, the smells at that place are just wonderful. Brings back childhood memories of my mom and dad taking me there. And you have uh, pleasant uh, fragrances, and you have uh, awful fragrances. I mean, we live here in Texas, so the cattle yards every now and then, when the wind gets out of the right direction, well, we get the uh, stench of the cattle yards. So in 2 Corinthians, Paul is talking about the aroma of Christ. What, what, would, what could that mean? Well, it was this uh, sense of that the Christian should be a, like a sweet aroma wherever we went. That whenever we walk into a room, there's this pleasant aroma of Christ coming. But also, you know, some smells that I might like, you might find offensive. I mean, I might like the smell of uh, cooked cabbage. You might hate that smell. So there's some smells that you might like and, and I might not like. So in this uh, version, Paul is saying, when we walk out there as the aroma of Christ, the ones that believe the message of the gospel were like a sweet aroma to them. But the ones that refuse that were like a stench. And so let's look at the verses and let's try to decipher what he's trying to get across to the uh, Corinthians. So let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 14. It says, But thanks be to God, who always leads us in his triumphant in Christ, and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. In other words... When we walk out into the world, we're a sweet aroma telling people about the salvation of Jesus Christ. And did you know that you are a captive uh, uh, audience? Once you've uh, accepted Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into you and seals you, and you are uh, this force going out for Christ is what we're supposed to be. And this other little Bible here, it reads a little differently. I want to read this too. It says, uh, 14, it says, But thank God he has made us his captives and continues to lead us in Christ's triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. I like the way that reads, like a sweet perfume. When we're out and about, we're in restaurants, now that we can go back out and eat a little bit, we're shopping at the supermarket, it says, Paul's saying that we should be like a sweet perfume out there spreading the word. Are you that way? Sometimes I wonder if I'm that way all the time. It's kind of hard to be a sweet perfume. It's kind of hard to live up to this verse, isn't it? Some of us might not feel like uh, we are worthy of that, but that's just the devil telling you. Uh, that you are more than worthy to be out and be a minister uh, for God. You are on display. How does that make you feel? Whenever you leave the church building or whenever you leave your home and you go out into the world, God says he's putting you on display for you to be a sweet aroma in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everybody's going to be looking at you. You might want to be on your best behavior then. You might want to uh, dress the part. You might want to look the part because you are the part. And there's really nothing you can do about that. Paul says you're a captive. You don't get to choose this. Even though some Christians, as we get up, God says, I need you to do the, this today. Sometimes we choose to do the different. And thank God that uh, Jesus Christ forgives us when we don't do what we're asked to do in his behalf. We're always being forgiven each and every day because we always uh, fail and fall, but we get up and dust ourselves off. That's the gospel. 
That's the mercy and the grace of, of God. Amen. And Paul goes on. He says in uh, uh, verse 15, he says, do as I find it, he says, for we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. This other uh, Bible reads a little differently, so we'll read it. It says, For our lives are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God, but this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. It says it's different. It's a, it's a difference because when we preach the gospel, we're preaching life and death. I remember when I was doing benevolence one time, we had these three women and their young women, and uh, Welby and Welby Smith and I were preaching the gospel to them. We were telling them about Jesus, salvation, and experience. And to one of the girls, it was a sweet fragrance to her. You could just tell that she was just eating it up. She was just receiving the word. But to the other girl in the middle, it was kind of indifference to her. She really didn't want to listen. She didn't really care. To the third girl, it was offensive. She just didn't want to hear it at all. She was very offensive. She was ready to go. And she told the other two, let's go. I'm tired of listening to this. And Webby and I looked at the one that was receiving it as a sweet aroma and said, if you'll stay, we'll, we'll talk to you and visit with you. And you could tell she was just right on the brink of accepting Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. So we'll find you a ride home. We'll, we'll get you the food voucher. And the other girl didn't want to hear it. She was ready to go. You see... The same gospel went out to three women. One, it was a sweet aroma. It was a great idea that there's this place that she could go and have all of her sins forgiven, a place prepared for her. To the other two, one was indifferent, and the other one was just totally set off by it. We were talking about life and death. Those three women left, and they went back to where they lived, and they got a, the church got a phone call. And uh, one of the ministers came out and said, Ron, somebody called in and said that you had told somebody they were going to hell. I said, Michael, I didn't tell them that they were going to hell. I just said that they weren't going to be in heaven. You see, when we're out and about and we're telling the people the good news, we're kind of shocked that everybody just doesn't accept it and just be happy. Some, it's it's just a stench and in they can't stand to hear it because we're talking about they're going to die and that they're not going to be in heaven. I've never in my life told anybody that they're going to hell. I have told them that according to the answers that we asked them, they're probably not going to be in heaven, and I guess they figure it out. So when we're out and about being this sweet aroma, don't always uh, think that everybody's just going to accept that. And so Paul is saying here, not everybody's going to accept this. Some people will uh, persecute you for preaching them the good news. And so as a question in here, it says, How can spreading the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus be both an aroma of life to some and aroma to death for the others? It's because of their hardened heart that they see it differently. And you need to understand that when you're out telling people about Jesus and not everybody's just wrapping their arms around you and say, oh, thank you for bringing me this good news. There's a whole lot of people out there that will persecute you for preaching the gospel to them. But that's our job. We go in love and we preach this sweet aroma, this knowledge of Jesus Christ. And to some, it's going to be like a sweet perfume. And to others, it's going to be like a stench of death. Some are going to accept the gospel, and they're going to enter into the kingdom. Some are going to refuse it with their hardened hearts, and they're going to die, and they're not going to go to heaven. That's not for you to do, though. Your job is to put the word out, put the aroma out. It's God's job in the power of the Holy Spirit to work with the people that the word's going out to. So don't feel guilty if people that you talk to about the gospel turn off and they say, no, I don't want to talk to that anymore. I can't believe he even said that. That's not your fault. Your job is just to present the gospel in a truthful uh, way, make it a sweet aroma, uh, and it's God's job in the Holy Spirit 
to win the loss. Some people say, man, I failed to win that person. No, that's not true. If you present the gospel in, in a way that you are taught out of the scriptures to present the gospel in a loving way, not a judgmental way, then you've done your job. And it's not your fault that that person did not accept what you were saying, did not accept and believe in faith. That's not your fault. So don't take a guilt trip when you're out and you're telling people about the gospel because that's not on you. God is the one that decides uh, how that's going to play out. Your job is just to present the gospel. In verses 16, it says, To the one an aroma from death to death, to the other an aroma from life to life. And who is adequate for these things? In this other little Bible here, a little bit different, it says, To those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. And who is adequate for such a task as this? To some of us, when we preach the gospel, we're death and doom. For others that are softened their hearts and are ready to come to, to the salvation knowledge of Jesus Christ, we're a sweet perfume, it says. And all of this mess that's happened in Texas now, there's going to be some people out there that are going through these hard times of having no water and no heat. Some of those are going to be very receptive to the sweet aroma that we bring of Jesus Christ. Some are just going to be totally set off by it. They're just going to be so hardened that they didn't have electricity or heat for a while that they don't want to hear it. Again, we present the gospel to those, all of the people. And then whoever accepts the gospel... Amen. Whoever doesn't, that was their choice. Verse 17 says this. This is going to be a little interesting for us today. It says, For we are not like many peddling the word of God, but as from sincerity, but as from God we speak in Christ in the sight of God. This other little Bible, I like the way this reads. It says, You see, we are not like the many hucksters who preach for personal profit, we preach the word of God with sincerity and with Christ's authority, knowing that God is watching us. Let's be real truthful about in America today and really all over the world. There are some people out there that are preaching the gospel for personal gain. Some it's for money, big money in some cases with some of these TV evangelists. Others it's for pride and, and uh, uh position. But Paul says we're not doing it that way. We're not preaching the gospel for money. We're not a huckster. We're not a uh, we're going to make profit off of this. In another version Paul says, "I do not preach the gospel uh, for profit." Now Paul was out preaching it the way it should be preached. Paul was preaching it as a minister of Jesus Christ with the authority of Christ that was given to him. And we have the authority of Christ to go tell people about the good news, the gospel. But when we're out there preaching and we're getting puffed up that, hey, we're something or uh, it's a power trip, you're on the wrong path. You're almost a false prophet at that point. You want to be very careful of that. So don't go out there preaching uh, the gospel to see how much money you can make. And don't go out there so you get a, a position. You go out there. And the authority of Jesus Christ presenting the gospel in the way God has given you the authority to do so that God in heaven watches you and says, well done, good and faithful servant. See, our rewards are going to be waiting in heaven. I wouldn't want the money down here on this earth or the position. What is that? Heaven awaits with our rewards. And he's watching us each and every day, Paul says. So Paul is telling these Corinthians, you have been given the authority to go out as a sweet aroma, as a sweet fragrance, as a sweet perfume, taking this message from God out to a hurting world. Jesus Christ is their hope. Jesus Christ is the one that came and died on the cross for all of them to save them of their sins. And that's what we take to a hurt and lost world. We should be a sweet aroma wherever we go. Whenever we walk into the church, we should be a sweet aroma. Whenever we walk out of the church in our day, uh, daily busy lives, when we're around our grandchildren, our children, wherever we're at, we 
should be that sweet aroma. Amen. Let's do what Paul has asked the second of the Corinthians to do in 2 Corinthians. Let's go about with a smile on our face and let's have a quick word of the gospel to anybody that we come across. I don't think there's any person that you should come across in your everyday travels in life that you shouldn't bring up a conversation about Jesus Christ. A sweet aroma. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for bringing this message to us. Father God, we thank you for Paul's teaching in 2 Corinthians, Father God, about we should be a sweet aroma wherever we go. Father God, that we present the gospel to anybody and everybody that we see in a loving way, not judgmental, but in a loving way, uh, hoping, Father God, and praying that their heart receives the truth, that they accept Jesus Christ by faith, and, Father God, that they enter into the kingdom. Father God, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people, and help us to go out with the word that helped prepare them. Father God, be with us each and every day. Father God, I pray that you put many, many people in our path each and every day that we may be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father God, that we be able to bring more people into the kingdom before uh, Jesus comes back. Father God, we thank you for what you do, and we thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Hey, keep those scriptures coming. We've got a whole bunch of scriptures in there as we're getting ready to send the word. Remember, we're going to have scriptures on there. We're going to send that word up to leaders in uh, our government as uh, we get closer to a vote here in our city about an abortion clinic, whether it stays or goes. We're going to send the word to our city leaders, and we're going to let the word do its work. So keep those scriptures coming, and until I see you later on, you guys stay safe, healthy, and warm. Have a good day.